In this video, we want to return to the idea of building an LED flasher here, sort of as a capstone or hello world project in electronics. And what we left with in the last video was a circuit that looks very much like this one here, where we had the classic RC, that is resistor capacitor charging circuit. And we know what will happen is the voltage at this point right here is just going to keep rising and rising and rising and rising until the, the capacitor eventually saturates. And what we did in a, in a circuit is, is we said, okay, why don't we just put an LED right here? So as the voltage rises, maybe the LED will eventually come on, drain the capacitor's charge, and go off again and flash. Now we saw, of course, that this didn't flash because we could never fully discharge the capacitor. And so what we sort of hypothesize or hope for is that maybe what we could do is we could attach a wire to the capacitor here, sort of like this, maybe one of the wires we have in our kit with one of those little um, conductors sticking out of the end here with a rubber thing we can hold. And we thought, okay, if we just touch the wire when the capacitor is fully charged and the LED is on, if we just touch this wire to this point right here, so that we actually make this contact in here, then what will happen is all of the positive charges that are on this side of the capacitor and all the negative charge on this side of the capacitor will be able to flow towards one another. In other words, all the positives will flow off the wire and neutralize the negatives or vice versa, however you want to neutralize a visualized charge flow. And when that's over again, we'll just remove the wire and allow the process to repeat itself. And so sort of by having a wire in our hand here and touching it here and releasing it and touching here and releasing it, we were able to make the LED flash. But of course, that's not electronics. We don't want to have to get involved with a wire and touching things with our hand, we want it to flash all by itself. So what we're proposing then is in our parts box here, we're going to get out this little black box here for the first time that has a bunch of little leads on the back of it here. And what this device here is called, it's called a relay. And we encountered relays a long time ago in this video sequence here when we were talking about switches with electromagnets and stuff. And essentially what a, this relay is here is a switch which hopefully you can visualize by now, current can flow, but if it reaches this open gap here, no current can flow. You can keep going out, and the current only can flow if this part here is pressed all the way down. So in other words, if this part here is touching here, then it can flow. But what a relay has inside of it is it has a little electromagnet in there. There's a bunch of wires wrapped around a metal core, and what can happen is if you run current into this lead, it'll circulate around the core here and out again, and in doing so, will create a big magnetic field in this region here, the magnetic field will pull the switching mechanism down like that until it touches there and the current can flow. So the relay is really an electronically activated switch and that's exactly what this little device is right here. Okay, So what we're going to do now is think of it, it still isn't obvious how to make an LED flash out of this, but one of the things that we think is one of the funnest thing about electronics is cleverness. That is, you just have to start thinking about the parts you have available and some of the lessons that you know and some of the properties of electronic devices. See how you can put these things together to accomplish a task. And that's just what we love about electronics. And the equipment just isn't that expensive either. This relay here was about a dollar or so, and the transistors are less than 10 cents each, and you can just get all this really cool stuff. So let's see how we can be clever about it. So what this, this relay has in it here is the following. If I hold it upside down and look at it upside down like that, and the reason why we're holding it upside down is because that's the way the manufacturer's data sheet comes, each one of these little dots here is one of the pins on the bottom of the relay here. So you can barely see this on the camera, but there's a pin here and here, two pins here, and two pins here, and I'm just sort of drawing those up here. I'm going to show you what's inside. Now what's in between these two pins here is I'm going to draw like this. This is actually the coil here that when energizes causes the relay switching mechanism to close. So when I had this drawing up a second ago, these two pins here, this one and this one, are essentially these two right here. If you run current through these two pins, the relay switch inside will close. Don't worry about the orientation on this diagram. It doesn't look quite right or doesn't look near enough or something. Just the manufacturer has ensured us that if you run current uh, and pump by no more than 12 volts on these two pins, the relay switch mechanism will close. So where is the switch? Well, if I continue drawing here, we have a wire that's coming down to here. This is what's connected to this top pin up here that sort of ends like this, and another one that goes up to the other pin like this. So there's the two pins like that. And then these two over here, turns out they're connected together, so it sort of gives you multiple tap-in points that we won't even need. And the switch goes over here like this. 
So the little switching part, the bend part, is actually right here. Here's that little bend part. Okay. So what will happen, again, don't worry about the proximity of the things, but if you just have the relay like this, you don't connect it to anything and nothing's going on, this diagram is indicating that these two pins here are connected to each other, and through this current path, you can see here the position the switch is in, it's also connected to this far right pin right here. So in other words, these two pins here are connected to that pin right there. And you can use your ohm meter to verify that. So if you connect the ohm meter either to this one or this one, and then to this one, you should see that in the relaxed state, there's zero ohms across those two pins. That's just how it works. That's the way the relay is designed. And what they're telling us now is that if we run current through the coil right here, pumped by no more than 12 volts, this switch here will change positions. The switch will move up to this position here when it's energized. And when you take the energy out again, out of the coil here, the switch will move back down to the other position. So in other words, what the switch allows us to do, this relay allows us to do, is to electronically decide when these two pins here are connected to the lower one or the upper one. That's what the relay allows us to do. If the coil is energized, these two pins will be connected to this one. In other words, that pin right there and this pin right there will be connected to this one up here. When we release the energy, let it go, the switch, there's a spring or something in there which will pull it back down. So these two lines right here will be connected to this one. On the actual relay, it means these two lines right here will be connected down here to this one right here. So that's in a nutshell what all the pins are about. These two are connected, so if you didn't want to use one for going to confuse you, just snip one off. You don't even need it because they're connected together. The next two in line here on the interior here are the pins for the, the relay coil to energize the relay. And again, when the coil is energized, this lower right one is connected to these two. Excuse me. When the coil is not energized, this lower right one is connected to these two. When the coil is energized, this upper right one is connected to these two. And that's all the system does. So how are we going to use that then? How on earth can we use that for an LED flasher? Find out in the next video.